And we now move to the agenda as is on the paper. And the first item on the agenda is questions to the First Minister. And question one, Susie Davis. Deal, <coughs> uh, First Minister, uh, will the Welsh Government's review of the individual patient funding review process extend to applications for all drugs which have not yet been approved by NICE or the All Wales Medical Strategy Group, Medicine Strategy Group? Well, preparatory work is currently, currently underway in terms of the review and detailed terms of reference will be agreed next month. Ah, thank you, First Minister. I look uh, forward to hearing uh, uh, more about that because uh, last week in challenging my assertion that Afinitor is more readily prescribed in England than in Wales, you referred to seven criteria which women in England must meet before they can receive Afinitor from the Cancer Drugs Fund. What you didn't say is that only women who don't meet all the criteria have to make their case through a process akin to the IPFR app style application. Women in Wales still have to go through that process whether they meet the criteria or not. Between April and September this year, 279 women in England met the criteria simply confirmed by their own consultant and the Cancer Drugs Fund paid for that treatment. Proportionally, you would expect 16 women in Wales to have benefited automatically from a Welsh fund. Can you tell me, First Minister, how many women in Wales meeting those criteria have received Affinita as a result of the IPFR? And will you review, con uh, uh, consider automatic entitlement to women whose consultants confirm they meet those seven criteria? Well, I will, of course, write to the member with the information she requested, but it is right to say uh, that it simply isn't the case that somehow there are drugs in England that are uh, easily available as compared to Wales. There are processes that have to be followed there through the Cancer Drugs Fund as well. Bethan Jenkins. Uh, First Minister, I've been told by the organisation ABPI um, that there's such a thing called the named patient um, basis, which is part of the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, that in certain circumstances the doctor can pres prescribe the medicine because the patient has a special need for it. Um, I don't think that many people are aware of that particular process, and I was wondering whether you could work with the Health Minister to make people more aware of it, because if they do fall through the gaps in, 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 uh, in circumstances that Susie Davis has outlined, perhaps this would be another way forward for people to seek the, the drugs that they need. Uh, I, I see no reason why that situation cannot be uh, publicised, and I'll discuss the issue with the Health Minister. Question two, Byron Davis. Thank you, Presiding uh, Officer. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the development of bus services in Wales, please? Well, we are committed to supporting bus services now and, of course, in the future, and we're actively looking at ways to maximise value for money and secure the best possible provision of services in Wales. Thank you, uh, First Minister. I asked uh, the Transport Minister last week about the concessionary fares scheme and assurances that it would not be cut. Um, there was expectation in the industry that an announcement would be made in the first week of December. Now the Minister tells me that uh, she hopes to make one in January. Can you assure this Chamber that uh, the Government will uh, ensure that people who hold concessionary bus passes, which we strongly support on, on this side of the Chamber, will actually have a bus service to use on the new, in the new year and reassure the industry at the earliest opportunity that you will properly fund concessionary passes. Negotiations are ongoing. There was a meeting, I understand, last week. There is a meeting uh, due this week as well. Uh, and our aim, of course, uh, during the course of those negotiations is to achieve a settlement uh, that uh, achieves our aims and is fair to the operators. David Ellis Thomas. Diolchwn <laughs> Basia, Mysid Awir, a Hivir, of course, Pob Porthlad, and a Vlad, say, of course, Cymru. And in it, Parrot? Um, First Minister, you'll be aware that a number of uh, services have been cut and reduced in the Vale of Glamorgan and that this is creating difficulties for residents living there and getting to work and to school. You have stepped in in other parts of Wales where there has been a market failure in the bus service and I wonder what you can do for the Vale of Glamorgan to make sure that um, people living in that area are still able to access an eff effective service. The, the Minister is aware of the situation in the Vale of Glamorgan uh, as members will be aware of what happened in, uh, in Ceredigion particularly uh, and I know that she is uh, monitoring in the situation to see what might be uh, possible in the future. We now move to questions from the party leaders. And first this afternoon, the leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. 
On Thursday this week, the results of the South Wales programme will be announced. More than 60,000 people participated in that consultation. The response will be given the day after the very last plenary session of this term. That means that there will be no opportunity to scrutinise the announcement until the new year. First Minister, can you tell us how this is an example of transparency and can you also tell us whether your government agreed to the timing of this announcement? Well, this is not a government announcement, it's a matter for the uh, programme board. There will be ample opportunity for members to scrutinise. First of all, of course, the community health councils will need to express a view uh, and they will, of course, uh, arrive at that view in due course. But I'm sure that members will be fully able to scrutinise the decision before any final decision is made. You didn't answer the question, First Minister. I asked you whether you agreed to the timing of this announcement. Today, there has been yet uh, another negative report on the organisation of our NHS about Betsy Cadwallader. Yesterday, there was further criticism of poor performance in transferring from ambulances at A&E. These are pressures which are likely to get worse under your centralisation proposals. Now, the BMA are saying that consultants are overworked. The Royal College of Surgeons have also called for a widespread inquiry into the Welsh NHS. Too many people are starting to see this looking like a crisis. After four years as First Minister, is this a legacy that you're proud of? Well, I'm proud of the fact that we see improvements in cancer treatment times where we are in the same position as England now that we improvements, see improvements in ambulance waiting times. I'm proud of the Human Transplantation Act that we put in place. Uh, I'm also uh, cognizant of the fact, of course, that the Royal College of Surgeons have called for reconfiguration. Uh, it's, not, it's one thing to pull on one thing they've said and then ignore another, but that's what they have said. And that reconfiguration, whatever shape it takes, of course, will be crucial for a sustainable and safe NHS in the future. In answer to a previous question, if she was asking me whether the timing of the programme board's announcement uh, was deliberately done to avoid scrutiny by this chamber and agreed by the government, the answer to that is no. First Minister, it sounds like you're saying to us, crisis, what crisis? You come here and you are in denial about the state of the health service every single week. OK, let's look at education then. An Estin report, an Estin report out today says that you are not doing enough to break the link between poverty and educational attainment. Last week, PISA results showed Wales to be the worst ranking in Western Europe. You may well have an anti-poverty minister, but you have no anti-poverty strategy. In health, in education and on the economy, Wales is bottom of the league. First Minister, when you first became First Minister, you said that your leadership would be all about delivery. Has he delivered? No. After four years in charge, after four years in charge, First Minister, when can we expect to see some evidence of delivery from you? Well, uh, I, I mean, the script is kept, of course, once again. Um, crisis, what crisis? I mean, she should avoid cliches like the play. But, uh, there we are. Sir. <laughs> we expect this uh, week after week. Well, I mean, when it comes to health and education, things are moving in the right direction. When it comes to the economy, it's simply untrue to say that we're bottom of the league when it comes to the economy. We're doing far better than the northeast of England, the northwest of England, the West Midlands. Our unemployment rate is lower than London. Our economic activity rate is higher than Northern Ireland. We are in the middle in terms of the UK, and we've had to, of course, undo the damage that her party did when they ran their economic development, uh, which she tries to forget, of course, uh, when, when, they were, when they were in government. The reality is we have in place Jobs Growth Wales, the most successful scheme for recruiting young people into apprenticeships, probably in Europe, and I, I, I doubt whether there's a better one in the world, actually. Uh, if you look at what we've done with the Wales Economic Growth Fund, if you look at what, what we've done with Enterprise Zones, we only saw this week what, uh, what's happening in England with Enterprise yeah. Zones. All those promises of jobs have had to be scaled back by between 70 and 90% yeah. because of the, the, the overestimate, the wild overestimates they put in place to begin with. No, we are a government that delivers. We are a government that has made sure that the lives of the people of Wales are improved. Economic Growth Fund, Enterprise Zones, Expanded Flying Start, a new tackling poverty action plan. 
the Organ Donation Act, the cap on dom domiciliary care charges, the Active Travel Bill, the Wales Coastal Path, the negotiation of devolution of tax and borrowing powers, the blacklisting ban, the carrier bag charge, leading their way forward on recycling, the foundation phase, student finance support, houses into homes, help to buy Wales, 500 community support officers delivered, the first anti-human trafficking coordinator in the UK. I'll stop there, shall we, because I've already gone further than the entire length of the Plaid Manifesto. We now move to leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. First, First Minister, yesterday, for the second time in as many weeks, Wales made the UK news headlines for all the wrong reasons. On average, Welsh patients spend the most amount of time stuck in the back of an ambulance waiting for a bed in an A&E department. In fact, between August and October this year, one ambulance took an amazing six hours to discharge a patient into hospital. Is that an example of the assembly of delivery that you promised us? Well, the average hand of a time for patients in Wales is 20 minutes, uh, which shows that the time that she has uh, made mention to is an exception to the rule. It's all very well picking out an extreme and trying to present that as the norm, when in fact that isn't the case. It is the case that most people wait for approximately 20 minutes, and that six hours, although difficult to explain and justify, is an exception. The average is Welsh patients wait longer than anywhere else in the UK. And that comes in the wake of the news that our educational results, according to PISA, were worse than the rest of the UK. In fact, we barely made it into the top 40, despite you promising me time after time after time that we would do better. We do have a higher jobless rate and a lower economic growth rate than the rest of the UK. And with regards to apprenticeships, First Minister, the number of apprenticeships in Wales has dropped 30% in the last five years, whilst at the same time it's tripled in England. Are these yet more examples of the assembly of delivery that you promised us? Once again, she refers to figures that are untrue. And that is that she, she claims that the economy in Wales is doing worse than anywhere else. It is simply not true on a basic reading of the figures. If you look at unemployment, if you look at employment, if you look at economic inactivity, we are doing better, as I've said, and I'll repeat it again, the northeast of England, the northwest of England, the West Midlands, we're doing better on unemployment, for example, than London in terms of economic inactivity in Northern Ireland. We sit somewhere in the middle, that is the reality of it. Our unemployment rate is 7.8%. It is uh, just north of the UK average figure of 7.6%. So it's simply not right to say that Wales is doing worse than any other part of the UK. That is preposterous. I mean, when it comes to, uh, to education, we've accepted there's work to be done, of course, with, uh, with PISA. That much we understand. But if she wants me to, I can read out once again what we've delivered over the course of the past uh, year or two. Because unlike her party, we make promises that we keep rather than break them a month or two into government. Kirsty Williams. First Minister, back in May 2011, you promised us your government would act with humility in the face of the problems Wales faced. Uh, your answers today show nothing but contempt and complacency in a selective reading of the figures. First Minister, I've seen very little evidence of humility from you in the past few weeks, but isn't it the case with a record like your government's on health, on education, on jobs, on economic growth, there is an awful lot for you and your government to be humble about? Well, we are open about the problems that we face. We don't try and spin out of them. We were open about the problems with PISA. We were open about the problems with the NHS. We never tried to conceal them. But, uh, you know, I mean, being lectured by the Lib Dems on this is incredible. Yeah. We talk about humility. This is the party that stu I mean, their leader stood with a placard saying there will be no student tuition fees. It was a lie. It was broken within months. The bedroom tax, utter silence. Utter silence. We see people who run the risk of being evicted because they cannot find somewhere to live and the Lib Dems sit there in utter silence. They talk about humility. If any party wants to show humility, it's the Lib Dems, because they have much to be humble about. Now we move to the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew Arty Davis. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, how many people slept homeless in Wales last night? Well, it is impossible to answer that question as well he knows. Well, it's not impossible, actually, because if your government started to collate the data as other parts of the United Kingdom do, you would have a base idea of the problem you need to deal with. Last, last Wednesday, I had the privilege to go out with one of the charities based here in Cardiff uh, to help on the breakfast run. 
And the point that they made to me about homelessness, about homelessness, about homelessness in Wales was that your government, since 2007, has failed to collate any statistics to help understand the scale of the problem in Wales. Will you today commit to your government working with local authorities and the charities to collate these figures so that you can begin to address the problem of long-term homelessness on our streets? We, we already collect figures for homelessness, uh, and they are figures that we uh, make reference to uh, during the course of questions and elsewhere. But the reality is this. I, can't, I just can't quite believe that the Leader of the Opposition is standing there and telling us that he has been on the streets talking about homelessness, and he defends the bedroom tax. Defends the be there is no policy more calculated, no policy more calculated to put people on the streets to live than his own policy of the bedroom tax. I ask him now, I wonder if they mentioned this to him, or did they praise him and say, thanks for introducing the bedroom tax, it'll make homelessness better. I doubt it very much. The reality is, his party in government has introduced the most spiteful the most ill-thought-out policy in terms of ensuring that more people become homeless, and he has sat there mute through it all. I have to say, when you hear the First Minister and his backbenchers and the parties of the left, they seem to think they've got the freehold on poverty. Well, they have got the monopoly on poverty. They help to create more poverty than any other party. When you look at the figures, when you look at the figures, more poverty was created after 14 years of Labour than any Conservative government. I asked you a very reasoned question. I asked you a very reasoned question, which the charities are putting forward that sadly, since 2007, the Welsh Government has failed to collect the statistics on long term homelessness. The individuals that I spoke to last week on the streets of Cardiff were not on the streets because of the single occupancy tax. They were on the streets because many of the problems that they faced through <laughs> mental health, for example, domestic dispute, and those were the issues that needed to be addressed. So why on earth is your government not working with the homeless charities yep. yeah, to address yeah. this by undertaking a simple measure of the problem so that your two poverty ministers, because you have two ministers to handle poverty after all the initiatives you've brought forward, can actually put something in place that will help those individuals who find themselves on the street night after night, year after year, First Minister? Well, I can tell you that 5,795 households were accepted as homeless across Wales in 2012 to 13. During the April to June 2013 quarter, a total of 1,355 households were accepted as homeless. The number of households placed in temporary accommodation decreased at the end of 2012 to 13. At the end of June 2013, there were 275 households placed in bed and breakfast accommodation. Now, he's nobody moaning about it. What he asked for were figures. He's got those figures. Those figures are, are collated. And it is not good enough for him to say to the people of Wales, the bedroom tax has nothing to do with me. Because I can tell him now, because I've met them in my surgeries, there are people out there who will be evicted because of the bedroom tax. They will be evicted because of the bedroom tax. And they will be evicted because of the meanness of his party and the fact he has done nothing. He has done nothing to stand up for the people of Wales who face eviction. I'm going to have to say, I was quite amused to... Uh, hear him talk about the parties of the left, because I know in his press conference this morning he talked about the personal chemistry that existed with the uh, leaders of Fly Cymru and the, uh, oh, and, and the Lib Dems. I mean, I, I, I wonder whether flowers, I wonder whether flowers have changed hands uh, across, the, uh, across the chamber. I wonder whether uh, there has been wooing that's taken place on behalf of the, uh, the dynamic leader of the, of the opposition, and uh, perhaps uh, the opportunity will arise over the Christmas period for the leaders of Fly Cymru and the Lib Dems to tell us exactly what the nature of that personal chemistry is. We now move back to the order paper, and question three is Darren Miller. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on the future of education in Wales, please? Yes, we're committed to ensuring that every learner reaches their potential. We have a range of initiatives in place to raise standards across education, and we're confident that these are the right reforms. First Minister, there's no doubt that the pizza results, uh, which showed us right down at the bottom of the UK League uh, table that were published last week, are a cause for concern and, indeed, national shame uh, here in Wales. 
Um, what work are you doing with uh, the providers of education in the faith sector uh, in Wales to perhaps uh, work with them to raise standards? You'll be aware that faith schools generally perform better uh, than uh, non-faith schools, and the diocesan offices uh, across Wales in both the Catholic uh, Church and indeed the Church in Wales, I'm sure would want to work with the government in order to improve standards across the board. I don't see there's evidence that faith schools perform better. There is. Um, there's well, variety in the. There's there I've seen the figures. There's variety in terms of the uh, performance of all schools in, in every in every sector. And I thought from the beginning of his question, he was suggesting that it was the faith schools' fault uh, that the PISA results were as they are. That clearly isn't the case. We will work with all providers in the state sector in order to ensure that PISA results improve in the future. That is what we have said on many many occasions. What we will not do is fragment education in Wales, and we will not cut education spending as his party wishes to do. Simon Thomas. Prevenido, my testiol, I think, Alicasclin Augan Estin, and a wedding at a draw the Adweather, a Duskig do Governor Gumaig and a Cabnot Sylvain. And Dangos board, a Miney Prow of a Cabnot Sylvain, a Dishia Duskiacati, and Decha Cavloni. A ma plant and Decha Cavai the level a Dilson Uvodano, a head with a Technegas in Calidanadio. Ava the Riva Sigasi, a Viviad, a Ado, Igadu ethos a Cabnot Sylvain, a Guaitha, a Puisa, Angin Radio, see the Codi, Savona, a Drowsa curriculum. Does him some ride with Gorsi Ian, Igalinade, and Ser Nath? The Gordesi Borma, Gida Hugh Lewis, a Gunidog, Gida Shoni Davis, the Carium Lan, Sicidi, a drug nolling in Nacham Rag, Vel Aliath, Erang left, with the Guaithi, Guaithahi, and Boydom and Hevid Ir Struthir, or Addis Drug of Rangam Ragne, Addisk. Addisk is sick of high ball and Gathisha, the Camas, the Rebel Nathan and Wish, and a Devodal, Agoth Gosni and the Gwell, of course, with uh, my covenant Sylvain would he need and lean a Thvi, a Chenadi, Savone, and a Gamrag, a Mhope Thalaf. William Powell. With First Minister, yesterday it was my pleasure to visit uh, Pembroke Power Station. Uh, one issue that was raised with me was the relative difficulty that uh, RWE have experienced in uh, recruiting key um, skilled workers for particular uh, functions within that organisation. While uh, Pembrokeshire College had got strong links with RWE, uh, they had had consistently to go further afield than Swansea or Cardiff uh, in sourcing candidates for their year in industry internship. What steps can your government take to uh, working in partnership with uh, both uh, local authorities, universities and other partners, what steps can your government take to improve the situation so that RWE can deliver for the local communities in Pembrokeshire, particularly for the highly skilled end of the market? Well, we have, of course, schemes such as Jobs Growth Wales and Pathways to Apprenticeships, but, but uh, our FE colleges have a good record of supporting industry locally, wherever they are in Wales. Uh, and we would want to work with the college and indeed with uh, Pembroke Power Station to increase the number of potential candidates for, uh, for the urine industry in the future. Uh, if the member would write to me uh, ex expressing the, uh, the difficulties that uh, are felt to be there, then we will, of course, uh, look to see how those difficulties can be addressed. Question four, Anne Jones. How is the Welsh Government ensuring that the heritage of the Welsh language is celebrated? Well, we support many projects in support of the heritage of the language. They include the National Eisteddfod, obviously, the Eirth Eisteddfod, the purchase of Caer Gors, the home of Kate Roberts. Uh, we will be celebrating 150 years of Olanba in Patagonia. And, of course, we had the recent Womex uh, Festival, uh, of which uh, Welsh music played a significant part. Well, thank you very much for that, First Minister. Can I say thank you for a meeting with the town clerk and, the, um, and also Gwyn Humphreys, who delivered a lecture on the 450th anniversary of the um, translation of the Book of Common Prayer into Welsh. Uh, that was an act steered through by the then uh, MP Humphrey Clwyd. And I think it's been uh, credited as being one of the things that's kept the Welsh language alive in all of those years. For me, that's an important example of how we can actually celebrate um, our rich culture and our heritage. And I wonder, would you provide um, an update on what, you, next, what the next plans are your government are looking at? To make, to make sure that people understand that those fights and those struggles to protect and keep the Welsh language are very much still in the hearts of everybody across Wales, even those of us who desperately struggle to continue to speak or learn, learn to speak the language. Well, I think the major um, opportunity arises with the 150th anniversary of the 
at sailing over Mimosa uh, from Liverpool to um, what is now called uh, Puerto Madryn in, uh, in Patagonia. And the establishment of a, a uh, I hesitate to use the words colony with the connotations that it gives, but a settlement uh, where to this day there are people who speak well five generations on. It's a remarkable feat of, uh, of survival and where, of course, there is tremendous interest still in, in the Welsh language. I think that will help us to raise awareness in Wales of what happened in 1865 uh, and, indeed, the, the reasoning behind the, um, uh, their, their leaving uh, Wales. Because the irony is on the Book of Common Prayer is that when the Bible was translated into Welsh, it was done so in order to, to move the Welsh people away from Catholicism by Elizabeth I. When the Co Book of Common Prayer was translated, the idea was uh, that it was to uh, move people away from the Welsh language. Because the idea behind it originally, when it was presented in Parliament, was that people could look at the Welsh version, look at the English version, and then understand English better as a result. Though I suspect the reality was that most people couldn't read neither language. But nevertheless, that was the irony of the translation of the Book of uh, Common Prayer. Uh, the heritage of the Welsh language is obviously clearly part of the heritage of Wales, uh, but it's also part of the heritage of the UK. Have you uh, spoken to any representatives of um, the other governments in the UK about how better to inform their nations uh, about the Welsh language, promoting its uh, importance here in Wales as a living language, but as also, also as part of their stories? Well, I mean, through the work we do, for example, with the British Council, they, they have a role in terms of promoting Welsh heritage and the, uh, and the Welsh language, or the primary role is, of course, uh, ours. Uh, but nevertheless, we always seek to promote the Welsh language both within the UK and outside. Beth and Jenkins. Prif fwyd o gyrwythos yma, aeth y llyfr yn eirin ar y we gan llyfr gell Cenedlaethol Cymru sydd yn cynnwys un o'r cerddi hynaf y gydoddyn sydd yn mydoli yng Nghymru. Ac mae'n dda gweld bod hyn wedi cael eu rhoi ar y we gan fod mwy o bobl pobl ifanc yr enghraifft yn gallu mynd i ddarllen yr hyn oedd yn rhan o trefftadaeth yn uniaeth y Cymraeg. A oes gennych chi unrhyw syniadau ar sut i ehangu ar hyn falle trwy mwy o apps ar gyfer yr hyn sydd yn... Y mae pobl yn gallu mynd ato i edrych ar beth yw trefdadaeth yr iaith Gymraeg ac sut i ehangu hynny i ymysg um, y poblogaeth yn gyffredinol. Well, we can go about uh, a kind of llyfrau er enghraifft ar, ar y llyfrau gael genedlaethol er enghraifft. Wastad yn edrych am ffyrdd i uh, ehangu y gwybodaeth o etifeddiaeth yr iaith Gymraeg. Uh, a wyn sy'n bydd yn ymwyn ystyried pob ffordd o sicrhau bod mwy o bobl yn, go, yn gwybod am uh, y gwybodaeth. I mean, a ble gath y gydoddyn yn crosi'r sgrifennu yn y, y lle cyntaf, a'r ffaith bod uh, un o'r um, uh, pethau cyntaf, pethau uh, gath i ysgrifennu yn y Gymraeg, a beth sy'n hynod o ddeddorol, wrth gwrs, yw er bod na blynyddoedd wedi mynd, canrhywfoedd wedi mynd ers i, i'r gydoddyn yn cael eu sgrifennu, mae'n bosib gyda tym bach uh, o, o waith i, i ddeall uh, beth uh, sy'n gan y gydoddyn yn ddweud. Question 5, Keith Davis. Diolch yw eich. A wna i fy prif yw'n unido, groi dwy ddariad ar waith Llywodraeth Cymru gyda'r Steddfwr Genedlaethol. Bod yn dilyn cyhoeddi'r adroddiad, a gyflwynwyd gan y grŵp Gorchwyl a Gorffen, ges i gyfarfod gyda'r prif wythredwr ar bumed o ragfyr i drafod ar gymhellion yr adroddiad hynny. Mae'r Steddfwr yn cwrs yn bartner pwysig i ni, a bydd yn cyhoeddi ymateb Llywodraeth Cymru i adroddiad y grŵp Gorchwyl a Gorffen yn fiam. Diolch am yr ateb, achos y Steddfod Sir Gar 2014 bydd y cyntaf gyda'u cynllunio'n ystyried yn llawn y gwaith yna. A un o'r themau yn yr argymellion yw adlewyrchu diwylliant a blas lleol. Ydych chi yn tuno, bydd cynnal yr Steddfod yn llanellu yn rhoi cyfle dain i'r ddangos yr hyn sydd gyda ni'n lleol, a bod digwyddiadau trwy gydol yr wythnos hynny fel sioi llwyddiannus iawn graf gan ysgol y stradau yn ffordd dda o wneud hynny. Bydd eithaf gwrs, mi'n bwysig dros ben, a fe ffaith bod rhaid steddfod, mi'n gymryd lle a chaca yn Sir Gar, yn bwysig i'r iaith yn Sir Gar. A hefyd eithaf gwrs, yn bwysig i bobl i ddeall etifeddiaeth llanelli fel tre. Mae'r tre hynna wedi colli i'r Gymraeg ers digawde. Er yr etifeddiaeth eithaf gwrs ar rownd y dref, wedi i'r gogledd. A pwysig felly eithaf gwrs bod bobl yn ddeall beth oedd etifeddiaeth tre llanelli ynglyn ar iaith Gymraeg. Mae hwnna'n bwysig er mwyn bod bobl yn deall faint o'r grif o'r Gymraeg yn edrych ar un adeg. Angela Burns. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Minister, I was delighted to hear your commentary to Keith uh, there because obviously Welsh language and Welsh culture belongs to everybody, <coughs> including non-speakers. And I was wondering what more do you think could be done by the Nationalist Stedford to encourage more non-speaking uh, Welsh people to come along and enjoy uh, that rich cultural event? I think the Estelle has done a great deal thus far. 
Uh, there's always more that, that could be done, but I think that the mould was very much broken in 1988 when the Estelle was held in Newport. Uh, there had to be a change of tack in terms of promoting the Estelle uh, in a, an area of Wales where Welsh was at that time spoken by 2% of the population. Uh, times have moved on. There, were, there was a time, of course, when um, if an organisation put up signs uh, on the mice in English in their stands, um, their stands would be... Um, Rearranged, if I can put it that way. I'm sure there may be, may be some, of course, in this building who were, at one time were part of that rearrangement, but I will, I'll, go no, I'll go no further than that. I think things have changed immensely. The fact that there is translation there now, uh, the fact that the Estelle has uh, reached out to those who are um, non Welsh speakers uh, is an immense improvement. Uh, and certainly a great improvement from the way things were, particularly in the, uh, in the 1970s. Uh, and we will continue to work with the Estelle in order to improve uh, their appeal to those who are uh, not Welsh speakers. Rhinopobor <laughs> A dieddi ydyw, wrth gwrs, yw ystyried yr Eisteddfod fel rhywbeth hollol diwylliannol, ond mae yna gyfleon ynglyn â chreu swyddi felly o'r sy'r Eisteddfod pan mynd mynd i'r rwle. Nes i drafod hwn gyda'r prif weithredol ynglyn â ymhaff i'r ddallwn i edrych ar ffynonellau eraill o ariannu'r Eisteddfod. Nid dim ond o'r diwyn y sector gyhoeddus, ond ti fas hefyd er mwyn wrth gwrs i gryfhau sylfaen cyllido ar Eisteddfod i hynna. Question 6, Antoinette Sandbach. Third. Will the Minister make a statement on the avoidance of never events in hospitals? Well, all NHS organisations must have effective systems in place to ensure that all practical steps are taken to prevent never events. When these rare events happen, I expect them, of course, to be reported immediately, to be investigated thoroughly, and for corrective actions to be taken. First Minister, as you've already identified, never events are unacceptable and avoidable events in healthcare and include, for example, wrongly prepared high-risk injections, wrong route administration of chemotherapy and 20 other, 23 other uh, specific events. Twelve never events have occurred within the Betsy Cadwallader Health Board since March. Can you tell me how many never events have been reported to the Welsh Government in the last three years? And given that they shouldn't be occurring at all, uh, what action has been taken to improve the leadership and management of never events? Well, I, I, I don't know the figure of 12 comes from in terms of never events. I can say that nine never events were reported in 2012 to 13, and seven in the first six months of this current year. I suspect what is happening, however, is that some events that are not technically never events are treated as such because of their seriousness. Uh, and where those events are identified, even though they are technically not never events, I would expect them as well to be investigated thoroughly and for steps to be taken to correct the situation. Lindsay Whittle. Well, First Minister, uh, you are quite right. These, these events are indeed devastating for the individuals. But I do believe we need to know the root causes of such serious events so that they never happen again. Is it uh, poor communication among staff, inadequate staffing levels, Overworked surgeries. What do you think, uh, First Minister? I, I don't think there's ever one particular reason for a uh, for a never event. Uh, there tend to be um, different reasons in different parts of Wales. They are sometimes to do with um, human error. They are sometimes to do with organisation. Sometimes there will be other reasons as as well. Uh, but what is important, of course, is that where never events do occur, they are fully investigated and steps taken to ensure that they do not happen uh, again. I mean, looking at the, the list of never events that have taken place uh, in Wales, uh, much of them seem to be human error. Some of them are to do with record keeping, I would suggest, and I, I suppose I'm guessing at this point. Uh, some of them may be to do with, with organisation, but I think it's pretty fair to say that each event is although rare, an event in itself in terms of circumstances, uh, but that's why it's so important, of course, that circumstances are investigated thoroughly because A, they are rare, and B, they tend not to be linked to each other. Casey Williams. Thank you. First Minister, when I raised this issue of never events earlier in the year, the Welsh Government said that there was guidance in place to prevent them from happening. Uh, could you demonstrate to me what steps your Government takes to ensure 
that that guidance is acted upon and followed? Yes, the National Patient Safety Agency developed a number of patient safety uh, solutions, <laughs> some of which aid the prevention of never events. Uh, all those solutions are monitored on a quarterly basis by ourselves, and the results are published on the Wales Patient Safety uh, website. The NHS Delivery Unit supports organisations as well to implement outstanding actions and to share best uh, practice. And some of those solutions have been implemented on a national basis. Uh, for example, the WHO Surgical Checklist Patient Safety Alert has been implemented through the 1000 Lives Plus programme. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, question 7, and Andrew Artie Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, will you make a statement on Welsh Government performance figures? Yes, the Programme for Government annual report shows that despite the challenging financial environment, progress is being made in many areas of public service delivery. Thank you, First Minister, for that answer. Uh, within the last week of the autumn term, um, the Business and Enterprise Minister confirmed that the key performance indicators would be made available for the enterprise zones uh, before the end of the year uh, in written questions that I've had. Uh, are these figures still on target? And would you agree it is regrettable that those figures haven't been made available to members while the Assembly is sitting, uh, given that the latter two weeks, uh, obviously, we will be in recess? Those figures are imminent in terms of their release. Um, members will be made aware of them as quickly as possible. I'm sure there will be the opportunity to scrutinise uh, ministers and myself on those figures when the Assembly returns. Mick Antonyv. Uh, will the First Minister outline any progress that's been made to improve Welsh ambulance uh, performance results in the RCT area and in Wales as a whole? Well, there has been an improvement in ambulance performance in RCT, although it's still uh, short of the target. That much has to be uh, accepted. Uh, I can say that 46 additional paramedics have been recruited and are now operational since September, with 22 more staff in post by the end of uh, January. Uh, those this is across Wales, I should add. These additional staff will improve service delivery and support the hard work of existing staff. Uh, First Minister, of course, you have a number of targets around economic development. Uh, when do you predict Wales will have a buoyant economy? A vibrant economy. A buoyant economy. A buoyant, uh, defi define buoyant. I think it will be some time before we are in a position where we were pre-2008. I think that's inevitable. I think the UK will be a long time before it's in that position. There are so many factors that are difficult to predict. Uh, the Welsh economy is moving in the right direction, but it's moving very slowly in the right direction. What troubles me is what will fuel recovery in the future. What is needed is for people to see a real increase in their wage packets. Unless they see that, they will not be able to spend, and therefore demand will be depressed and the economy won't be sustained. Uh, so we can do what we can uh, as, as a government from our point of view. But secondly, of course, it is important that the UK government sends out the message that people do need to see real increases in their salaries and wages in order to get the economy going. In terms of when that might happen, I know that the, some of the world's economists are saying the end of this decade. Uh, Wales can't be divorced from the uh, economy of the UK or Europe in general, uh, but of course uh, we do need to see all levels of government working together to, in order to deliver a, a faster recovery uh, than has been seen in the UK thus far. Question 8, David Rees. Yeah, Will the First Minister make a statement on the delivery of services by Wales' fire authority? Yes, fire authority. These are autonomous independent bodies and it's for them to determine the risks and required provision of services in their geographical area. Well, thank you for that answer, First Minister. Mid and West Wales Fire and Rescue Service is currently proposing changes to frontline services, including change in the shift patterns of full time firefighters to continental side eight hour shift patterns, which I understand are not used in any other brigade in the UK, or the change from 24 hour full time cover to daytime only and even in nighttime on call, and some stations closing, including Cummer in my own constituency. Such changes will undoubtedly result in increased response times and may put lives at risk. Will the Welsh Government look at these proposals by fire authorities to, to ensure that no additional risk to the public will result from any proposals being put forward to address budgetary constraints? And, will you, and do you agree that any consultation with the public should include full details of the proposals and that they should be held across the area? Uh, yes, I, I understand that the Fire and Rescue Authority have said there will be no station closures at this time, so I can give the member that, that, that assurance, which I'm sure will be uh, welcomed by him and his constituents. It is, of course, for Fire and Rescue Authorities themselves to determine the risks and require provision of services in, the, in their geographical area. In doing so, they must, of course, undertake robust risk assessments to enable them to consider the impact of their decisions on the safety of the public. And I would expect them, of course, to be as open as possible with the public in terms of any changes they might propose. William Graham. Uh, 
The, st the statistics show, unfortunately, that firefighters have come under attack on over 150 occasions in the past three years. And more worryingly, of those 87 serious attacks, only three have led to prosecutions. What can your government do to raise awareness of this and to show that these attacks are wrong and must stop? <coughs> It's difficult to know, of course, what the state of the evidence was with some of these cases, but three is very low compared to the number of attacks there have been. Let me make it absolutely clear on behalf of the Welsh Government that where, uh, this is true of all people, of course, but the, this is in relation particularly to the fire services, where fire officers are attacked, particularly in the course of their duty, I would expect to see the police take action, I would expect to see prosecutions, and I would expect to see convictions. The fact that they are fire officers, officers is neither here nor there. I take the same view with regard to NHS staff. There is no excuse whatsoever. I don't care what condition people are in, particularly if they've had too much to drink uh, or if they are in some way distressed. There is no excuse for attacking people who are going about their business of saving lives. And I expect to see prosecutions where fire officers and others who are working uh, to help people are concerned. Roger Dean Thomas. Prewyd oedd ma awdur dodau tân ac achub ledled Cymru yn gwynebu sefyllfa eithriadol a anodd, maen nhw'n gorfod gwneud penderfyniadau anodd. Yn gyd eisyn y toriad yn yr arian, maen nhw'n derbyn oddi wrth Llywodraeth Cymru. Wnewch chi fel Llywodraeth dderbyn Cymrifoldeb, gweithio gyda'r awdur dodau tân ac achub ac hefyd gyda awdur dodau lleol i sicrhau nad yw y gwasanaethau sylfaenol sy'n achub bywydau yn yn cymunedau ni yn cael ei effeithio. Nid mater yr awdur dodau tân ac achub ar eu pen i hyn i hyn, mae ganddo chi fel Llywodraeth Gyfrifoldeb i weithio gyda nhw i sicrhau fod y gwasanaethau hynny'n cael ei amddiffyn. Dau weid bod y gwynidog mynd i ymweld â phob awdur dod tân yn y pythefnos nesa, er mwyn trafod yn nhw beth, beth yw i heriau nhw yn ei ardaloedd yn nhw, a wedyn ni wrth gwrs byny gallu gweithio fel Llywodraeth gyda nhw. Peter Black. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, although the um, Midland West Wales Fire Authority has, has ruled out station closures for now, I understand there is still the possibility of a merger of Gorsine and Pontadillais fire stations, which um, will effectively leave both areas having a slow response from just one fire engine. Can I ask what oversight your government has in terms of ensuring that when fire authorities do make these sort of changes, the safety of local people and their property uh, remains paramount? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, we expect fire authorities, of course, fire and rescue authorities, to have plans in place that ensure people's safety. Uh, where there is a suggestion that safety is being compromised, then, of course, the Minister would uh, look uh, at the scenario to see whether that is, in fact, the case. Question 9, Alid Roberts. Diolch with Padro the Adair the Lianni, and my Privuni Dogane there, Binet Muin Assessed Gwaith, or Luivani, Diguriade Maur, Sincalarian Cohoides and Humri. Mae go gofyn bod pob digwyddiad sy'n derbyn gallu grant o danau'n strategaeth digwyddiadau mawr yn cyflwyno adroddiadau ar ôl uh, digwyddiad uh, i nodi uh, cynydd yn erbyn y targedau uh, uh, cytunwyd arnynt. Diolch am hynny, uh, mi roedd rali Cymru yn ddiweddar yn lwyddiant mawr, ond dwi wedi derbyn llythyr uh, ynglyn â uh, mynediad ar ran yr anabl, a gai ofyn i chi os oedd na unrhyw amodau ar y grant yn cael eu rhoi i'r sefydliad o'n trefnu'r uh, achlysur digwyddiad arbennig yma, um, achos mae'r person sydd wedi sgwennu at fi'n deud bod na ddim uh, cyfleusterau ar gael ar gyfer yr anabledd yng Nghastell y Waen, na garlanau dyfrdwy, a'i fod o'n teimlo yn waith na be mae o'n digwneud fel person yn abl ers rhyw dair neu bum mlynedd. Yn gyffredinol, wrth gwrs, bydd yn erfyn uh, i unrhyw uh, corff sydd yn um, uh, trefnu er, uh, digwyddiad fel hyn i sicrhau bod yn y fynediad o gael i bobl anabl. Ynglyna a oedd hwn yn un o delerau uh, uh, gytundeb i hunan, byddai wedi bydd i'r aelod uh, ynglyna ag ateb y cwestiwn yn fanol. William Graham. Thank you, officer. Many world leaders set to meet in Newport in September of next year when the NATO summit takes place. What lessons has the First Minister and his government learnt from the legacy of the Ryder Cup and how can these be put into practice? Well, the NATO summit, of course, is not uh, something the Welsh Government is involved with in terms of, of organising. Uh, the Prime Minister has indicated, and we're grateful for this, that we will be able to arrange a, a welcome event. Uh, be it a reception uh, around the summit itself, but the organisational details are very much a matter for uh, UK government uh, as the, uh, the body responsible. That said, of course, we're fortunate to have the Celtic Manor 
uh, which uh, successfully hosted the Ryder Cup, despite the weather, as we know, on uh, one day in particular. Uh, and we are fortunate that we are seen as having uh, a venue that is able to host one of the world's biggest summits. Uh, and that is something we very much welcome as a way uh, to put Wales on the map and particularly to showcase Wales amongst uh, NATO leaders. Claire Griffith. Diolch Llywydd, mae Denny uh, digwyddiad yma wrth ymyd chwareion yn rhaid rhai campau wrth gwrs yn dibynnu ar gael stedia addas. Um, a gogledd Cymru uh, yn ddiweddar wedi bod yn rhan o uh, gynnal Cwpan Rygbi'r Byd, uh, Cwpan Rygbi'r Gyngrair Byd, wrth gwrs. Gael ofyn pa sesiad mae'r Llywodraeth wedi wneud o stedia chwareion yn y gogledd uh, a'r potensial sy'n i fuddsoddi, felly nid yn unigol gyrchol yr eidrwydd o gyfeiriad y Llywodraeth, ond yn sicr i fuddsoddi er mwyn adeiladu ar y seilwaith yn efel bod ni'n gallu der, denu mwy o ddigwyddiadau'r gogledd. Ni wedi y stediad hwn, achos y gwrs yr hyn o'n bryd, mwyn elai, mae yna ddau stadiwm, sef uh, a'r cae ras. Problem y cae ras yw, wrth gwrs, nid yw'n gwneud A o achos hynny, mwna'n meddwl bod ar rai um, um, chwaraeon ddim yn, yn derbyn y ffaith bod nhw'n mynd i waren unrhyw really, lle sydd si ddim a, 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 a sita i gyd. So mwna'n um, broblem yng nghyn â rygbi rindef, dwi'n ddim yn broblem gyda rygbi'r cyngrhaedd. Uh, Mae lot fawr o arian, wrth gwrs, wedi cael ei fuddsoddi ym Mharc Eirias yng nghyn â'r uh, noddau sydd yna, yng nghyn â'r cae hunan, uh, yng nghyn â'r stadiwm, a hwnna, wrth gwrs, yw uh, Sylfaen nawr, uh, tîm Dan uh, Higen Cymru, sydd yn waren yna um, yn, yn reolaidd uh, nawr. Mae hwn yn un o pethau ni i ddiwyd yn ystyried. Um, Ymhaffordd, allwn ni i godi safon yng nghyn â setau'r enghreft um, rai o'r uh, o stadia, uh, y gogledd, a byddwn nhw'n byddwn ni'n ystyried yn y dyfodol hefyd. Thank you, First Minister.